sing it. Oh, but I'm glad. So glad it is. Oh, but I'm glad. So glad it is. I don't know why Jesus loves me. I don't know why he cares. I don't know why he sacrificed his life. Oh, but I'm glad. So glad he did. Oh, but I'm glad. So glad he did. I don't know about you, my brother. Oh, but I'm glad. Lord, so glad you did. Jesus, oh, but I'm glad. So glad you did. I said, oh, but I'm glad. Jesus, so glad you did. Yes, oh, but I'm glad. So glad he did. Let's lift up our voices and just bless his name. Yes, he didn't have to do it, but he did it for you. The Calvary's project was all about you and I. He went to the cross. He didn't have to do it, but he did it just because he loves you and I. Let's just give him praise. He's the reason. He's the reason. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. You are the reason. You are the reason for this moment. You are the reason for this gathering. Father, I just want to thank you. I thank you for my brother. I thank you for my sister. I thank you for every family that is watching, oh Lord. I give you glory for their lives. I thank you for your protection. I thank you for your prosperity. I thank you for your defense, your security over their lives, oh Lord. I bless you. Thank you for this day. This is the day you have made. We are so glad we are alive and we are part of it. I just want to thank you for this divine moment we have in your presence. I know in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. May your name alone be glorified in this day. We thank you. Lord Jesus Christ, we bless you. Sweet Holy Spirit, we honor you. We we'll give you glory and praise. Thank you for what you are about to do in our midst even this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. I want us to pray maybe two more prayer points. And I'm reading Exodus 15. And the verses 24 through 26. Now you know Exodus 15 uh, talks about or begins with the song, the victory song that Moses and Miriam sang when the Lord parted the Red Sea and they walked on dry grounds, but their enemies were drowned by the very sea that they walked through. So they sang and they glorified him. But as they made their journey through the wilderness, there came a time that they had no water. They had no water. So, the same God that they were not long ago glorifying and praising for the victory he had given them, they began to complain and murmur against. And the Bible says, 
the verse 24 of Exodus 15, And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? What shall we drink? Now, and listen carefully, the verse 25. The Bible says, And he, Moses, cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, he says, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that heals thee. Now, I am the Lord that heals thee is one of Jehovah's covenant name, Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord that heals thee. I want, us, I want to take verse 25 and 26 and then we'll pray. See, when they were in trouble and they were complaining, Moses went to the Lord in prayer. He cried unto the Lord. The people complained and murmured against Moses. But Moses went to the Lord. You see, he knew where the solution was. So that is where he went. And what happened was after he prayed, the Bible says the Lord showed him a tree. He revealed the solution to him. Oh God, I hope somebody is catching on to this. There was a problem. They cried, they murmured against Moses, a fellow human. But Moses knew where the source of his solution was, which was Jehovah. So he went to the Lord and he prayed. And the Bible says the Lord showed him a tree. And when he placed the tree in the water, the water, knew, the water turned from being bitter to being sweet. Now, my brother and my sister, I want us to pray. I want us to pray. I want us to pray. See, you, there is a solution to every problem under this sun. The solution is in our Lord. But we have to call. We have to cry. We have to pray to him. Not to any man. To him. Because he has the solution. He will reveal it to us. Now watch this. In Jeremiah 33 verse 3, it says, Call unto me, and I will answer you, and show you, and show you great and mighty things that you don't know. I will show you great and mighty things that you don't know. Moses prayed, the Lord showed him a tree. We are going to ask him to show us a tree, that miracle tree, that solution for a thing around. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 45, the verse 3, it says, I will give you the treasures of darkness and lead you to the hidden riches of secret places. I will reveal to you. It's all about revelation, my brother. So I want us to pray. In the name of Jesus, you want to pray, Lord, open my eyes to see that miracle tree. Open my eyes. Reveal that solution for a turn around. I want a turn around in this situation. Reveal it to me. And I want to agree with you, my brother. In the name of Jesus, our Father in heaven, I am agreeing with my brother and my sister. We are asking you to show us, show us that miracle tree. Let there be a turn around in the name of Jesus. The miracle tree, the miracle tree, the miracle tree, the miracle tree you showed Moses. There is a miracle tree that will turn our situation around. Reveal to us, O oh Lord. Open our eyes to see. Open our eyes to see. You said we should call and you will show us great and mighty things that we don't know. Open our eyes to see in the name of Jesus. 
In the name of Jesus, open our eyes to see the solution to that sickness, that the solution to that problem, the solution to that challenge. Open our eyes, reveal it to us, O Lord. You are the Lord, our God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be, O Lord. Let this week be that week of miracle, that week of revelation for a turnaround in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Say a big amen to that. Amen. Now, the verse 26, he says, If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, he says, I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that heals you. Now, let me say something to you that some of you, uh, it might be a shock or a shocker. Sicknesses and diseases are not for covenant people. Okay. I, I can feel, I can feel that, that, that mm. sicknesses and diseases are not for covenant people. It says, I will put none of these diseases that I brought upon the Egyptians on you, for I am the Lord that heals you. Now, let me say something else. We are living in a fallen world. Hallelujah. Even though sicknesses and diseases are not for covenant people, because we are living in a fallen world, we are attacked by sicknesses and diseases. So watch this now. We don't deny the existence of sicknesses and diseases. But we deny their right to exist in our bodies. Should I say that one more time? We don't deny the existence of sicknesses and diseases in this fallen world as covenant people. But we deny their right to exist in our bodies. Because our bodies are not playing fields for sicknesses and diseases. Our bodies are temple, the temple of the living God. Remember, it says, don't you know that your body is the temple of the living God and his spirit dwells in you? So, and, and, and somewhere in 2 Corinthians 6, it says, it says, the spirit of God doesn't coexist with the devil. Hallelujah. The temple of God that doesn't live side by side the temple of Baal. All right? So we are going to pray. We are going to pray. We are going to agree with God. See, the first thing you have to you have to do for God to work for you is to agree with him. If you don't believe in what he says, then you are not going to get any reward from him. So we want to agree with him. And then we exercise authority over every sickness and every disease. I'm bringing this up because we are living in a pandemic age. This coronavirus and whatever disease it is, we want to deny their right to exist in our bodies because our bodies are the temple of the living God. Open your mouth and pray. And exercise authority in the name of Jesus. Father, we agree. We agree. We agree that you are the Lord that heals us. You are our Jehovah Rapha. We agree with you that diseases and sicknesses are not for covenant people. And we are covenant children. We have blood-bought right to be healed. Blood-bought right to be healthy. Blood-bought right to be protected. Blood-bought right to live longer. In the name of Jesus Christ, we exercise that authority and dominion over sicknesses and diseases, over every virus, over every disease germ. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we curse every disease from the root with death. We curse them with death. We curse coronavirus with death from the root in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Say amen to that. No, 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 no. I said say a believing amen. Hallelujah. There is something special that happens to me when I come into your presence. 
my helper. I know you know how to sing this song. There is something special that happens to me when I come into your presence, my helper. You are my helper, oh Jesus. Thank you. You are my helper, oh Jesus. There is something special that happens to me. I don't know about you. When I come into his presence, my helper. Hallelujah. God bless you, my brother and my sister. I want to welcome you to another round of thinking scripturally with Pastor Sam. And uh, I just want to say, maybe it's belated by happy 4th of July weekend. Amen. Independence weekend. This morning, I, I just want to introduce this message I title, God Keeps Covenant. God Keeps Covenant. Hallelujah. God Keeps Covenant. It is important for you and I to understand that. See, we are covenant children. Our God is a covenant God. You know, when you look at your Bible, you have Old and New Testament. Testament means covenant. We have all the new. We are covenant people. We serve a covenant God. Hallelujah. But our lack of understanding of the covenant and the underlying oaths that makes covenant sacred, enforceable, and even unbreakable is the reason why many of us miss out on what God has for us. It's our lack of understanding. So I want to I want to I want to help all of us understand some few things about covenant. See, 4th of July, Independence Day, we're celebrating America's independence from the British. But in 1787, independence was 1776. In 1787, all right, 55 delegates from 12 states came together in Philadelphia. And then they entered into a covenant that which we call the Constitution, the U.S. Constitution. Now, and they delineated, if you like, or put enshrined in that document certain promises, certain clauses, all right, which 39 of them signed. They ratified it, all right? And that is what holds and binds the nation, United States of America, together. They entered into a covenant, an agreement, a contract. Because after, even after independence, the nation, there was problems. They were... Even though they were they were in a, in some sort of union, it wasn't holding. People were doing states were doing their own things. So they they came together for this. So watch this now. Their respect and adherence to that covenant, to that constitution, that document of promises that they made. Is what keeps them together. The moment they disregard this covenant, this whole thing will fall apart. 
Hallelujah. I hope you are catching me. I'm, I'm taking you on to something. There will be chaos if the states no longer adhere to the con Constitution. The United States of America will disintegrate. So covenant is very important for people. Oftentimes you see weak states entering into covenant with strong states. Weak people into covenant with stronger people. An alliance of some sort. Amen. Now, a year before the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia, George Washington said something. I want to read that. I want to read that because, see, if you don't understand it, we see it all around us. But we don't understand it. So, because we don't understand it, we don't really understand our covenant with Jehovah. And that's why I'm using this Independence Weekend and this, to, to, to help us understand that covenant is very key in the eyes of God. See, Judge Washington said something in 1786, a year before they, they, they entered that covenant. He said, I do not conceive that we can exist long as a nation without a power which will pervade the whole union. I do not conceive that we can exist long as a nation without a power which will pervade, in other words, permeate the whole union, which will, which, which will, if you like, be, be without a power that everyone will respect. The whole of the union will respect. Without that power, without something that will guide everyone in the union, we cannot hold this union for a long time. Amen. Now, with that said, let me give you one example, a classic example of what did. Look at Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. The Bible says, you know Genesis chapter 6, now the, the earth was populated and wickedness had gone so, so wild. People were doing their own things that God said he will destroy everyone on the earth. So God has decided to destroy the earth he has made because of the wickedness in the earth. But this is what he said in the verse 8. The Bible says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. God has planned to destroy the earth. But there was somebody called Noah who found favor with God. Who found grace in the sight of God. Alright, in the eyes of God. Now, jump to the verse 17 through 20. Verse 17 through 20. God said to Noah, He says, And behold, I, Jehovah, even I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee, Will I establish my covenant? Pay attention. I will destroy everything upon the earth, but with you I will establish my covenant. Thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort, 
shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female, of fowls after, the, uh, after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, and of creeping things of the earth after its kind. Two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. Now, God was going to destroy everybody, but somebody found favor with him. Somebody found grace in his sight. And he said, this particular person, Noah, he said to him, I'm going to destroy everything. But you, I am entering into a covenant with you. I'm entering into an agreement, into a contract with you. Build an ark and bring in these animals that I will instruct you about. Watch this, he said, that they may live. So the ark was also for preservation. Now, let me say something to somebody. Noah found favor in the eyes of God. And that favor was extended to his family. It's very important for me to throw this at somebody. That serving God benefits not only you, but your family as well. God is a family God. That's why he's called the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is very important. That when you are serving God, do it not just for you, but also for your family. Have them in mind. Amen? Now, Noah built an ark of a covenant. Because that ark, God entered into a covenant with him and the ark was built. So it was ark of a covenant. You know, Moses' time, we talk about the Ark of the Covenant that the Israelites carried when they are going to war and, 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 and where they are moving from place to place. This was the beginning of it. It was an Ark of a Covenant that God instructed Noah to make. Now, but the Ark preserved not only Noah, but his family as well and all the animals that God brought to him. This is important. See, Noah built the ark that was used to save him and his family. I want somebody to understand something. That you have to be a participant in your own miracle. Hallelujah. You are a believer in Christ. You are a child of God. You are a covenant son, a covenant daughter. But the covenant promises will not manifest if you are not participating in it. You cannot be an outsider for the miracles to manifest in your life. Noah built the ark that saved him. Hallelujah. We have an ark. We New Testament saints have an ark in the person of Jesus Christ. See, when Noah entered the ark, and the floods came. The floods lifted the ark. And Noah soared. Or rather floated. On the water that was destroying everybody. Because he was in the ark. Jesus Christ is our ark. As New Testament says. It's our ark. Your Bible says in John 3, 16, 17. It says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever will believe in him should not perish. Whosoever will believe in him, in him. You have to be in the ark. He is the ark. You have to believe in him for you to be saved, for you not to perish. Are you hearing me? It says, the verse 17 says, For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So it's in him. You have to be in the ark. Hallelujah. Jesus said in John 6, 37, he says, All that the Father gives to me will come to me eventually. A day that come to me, I will in no wise cast out. I will not throw them away. I will hold them. Hallelujah. 
Though, those that come, those that come, they will come. And those that come, I will not throw away. Hallelujah. We have an ark as New Testament saints. New covenant saints. We use testament so we, we, some of us don't really understand what that is. We are new covenant saints. We have an ark in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus himself said in John 15, the verse 5, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those that, if you live in me as a branch, you will produce fruit. Without me, you cannot do anything. And then he went on and said that if you don't abide in me, you will be cast off because there is no way a branch that is detached from the vine will receive the nutrients for it to live. Hallelujah. So he says, if you don't stay in me, if you don't abide in me, I am the vine, you are the branch. As long as you are connected to me, you will receive your nutrient from me and you will grow, you will bear fruit. Hallelujah. And in the verse 7, the verse 7 of the John 15, he says, If you abide in me and my word abide in you, then you ask whatever you you will. If you abide in me. This time, see, our covenant, our ark is not like, it's, it's more than that of Noah. Because in Noah's case, Noah had to be in the ark. The ark wasn't in Noah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said something right there. But Jesus, our ark, is also in us. We are in him and he is in us. That give us a dove bowl power. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? So it says, if you abide in my if you abide in me and I in you, then you ask whatever you will. Hallelujah. You ask whatever you will, and it shall be so unto you. You get that? It will be so. It will be so. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. Hallelujah. See, we have a covenant with God. And we have to, we have to come to that understanding for us to really have the effect, positive effect and impact of this covenant relationship. Are you listening? Let me show you something else in Matthew, Matthew 14. I want to give you a, a, an example of uh, this, this thing, Matthew 14. And uh, I'll read from the verses 6 through 11. At this time, Herod has arrested um, John Baptist, John the Baptizer. And so he was in prison. John was in prison. And the Bible says, and but when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. Now, this young lady danced. You, you could imagine the kind of dance. I mean, what, whatever he, she did, the moves. And the Bible says, whereupon Herod promised with an oath. He promised with an oath. Remember, Herod was a king. Jehovah, the God we serve, is a king. Actually, he's the king of kings. Herod was a king. This girl danced, made some moves. And Herod was so enchanted, if you like, that he made a promise with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. 
See, in Mark's account, Mark 6, Mark, he said, I will give you even to half of my kingdom. Think about that. A king on earth promising a young lady with an oath. Remember I said, lack of understanding of the covenant and the underlying oath. That when it is made with the oath, it is enforceable, unbreakable, and it makes it sacred. Are you listening? And so he, 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 he said to this lady, I will give you even to half of my kingdom, whatsoever you ask. And she being instructed of her mother said, give me John Baptist's head in a charger. Listen carefully. And the king was sorry. But nevertheless, for the old sake, for the old sake, and them which sat with him at the dinner, he commanded it to be given. And he sent and beheaded John in the prison. And his head was brought in a charger and given to the lady, young lady, and she brought it to her mother. The king made an oath, a promise barred by an oath. And even though the girl has something that he didn't like, he, he wished the young lady had asked something else. But because of the oath that was behind the promise he made, he had to. Hallelujah. See, if human kings who have given promises with oath cannot or will not go back on their word, how much more Jehovah, how much more the king of kings, the creator of the heavens and the earth. How much more? I want you to think with me because as we go through life and go through this pandemic, we have to understand certain truths about this God we serve and about this document we have called the Bible. Hallelujah. That whatever God says is a covenant. Everything about God is covenant. Amen. Let me read something to you. Let me read something to you before I go on. In Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. Uh, the whole chapter gives something. But I want to pick Hebrews chapter 6. See. From the verse 10 you will see. that God says. He is not unrighteous. The writer says God is not unrighteous to forget our labor of love which we have shown to the saints and to, to the Lord. What's this now? And, and then in the verse 12 he says, You should not be slothful, but be followers of those who through faith and patience obtain the promise. And then he went on and said that, For when God made promise to a Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. Hallelujah. God swore by himself. He made promise to Abraham. He swore by himself because there was none greater than him. Watch this now. In the verse 14, he says, Saying, surely blessing, I will bless you. God made an oath by, with his word. He, there was an oath back in his word. He made a covenant. He spoke. His word was a covenant. His promise to Abraham was a covenant. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that. And then he said, In multiplying, I will multiply you. And so, after he, Abraham, had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Verse 16 says, For men verily swear by the, by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of everything, an end to all strife. See, 
Men swear by greater, so that you know, uh, those of you, uh, us who come from Africa, when there is a dispute, and then, the, 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 uh, I mean, the family cannot settle, or if it's between family, two families, and they cannot settle it among themselves, they just go to the king, and they invoke the name of the king. And the moment that oath, the, the name is invoked, and, and that oath is pronounced, Everybody has to be quiet and let the king, what the king decrees, be the end of everything. So the Bible is saying that men verily swear by greater and an oath of confirmation or for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. The oath is very important when covenants are made. The oath underlying supporting the covenant or backing it is very important now listen carefully it says in the verse 17 wherein god willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise remember heirs of promise is talking about you and i because the bible says in romans 8 that the spirit of God bears witness with our spirit. That we are children of God. And if we are children, then we are heirs. If we are heirs, we are joint heirs with Christ. Hallelujah. So God willing, more abundantly, not just willing, but more abundantly, to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath. God was more willing abundantly to show, to, to get us to really believe in him, to put more confidence in him by, by what? He says, to show us the heirs of promise, the immutability of his counsel, the unchangingness of his promise, of his word, he backed it with an oath. God wants you and I to trust this Bible. My brother, this Bible. My sister. He wants us to trust what he has said. So he didn't just give us the word. The immutability of his counsel. Uh, counsel here is word. His promise. He confirmed it with an oath. What the 18? That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie. We might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to hold upon the hope that is set before us. That by the immutability of these two things, God's word barred by his oath. We will have strong consolation, strong comfort, strong confidence that the God we have come to will do what he says he will do. Are you listening? I, I hope you are listening. Amen. We serve a covenant keeping God. If Herod, because of his word, barred by his oath, honored his word by killing the prophet of God, God will honor his word. He will honor his word. I'm telling you. He will honor his word. That's why we have to trust him and hold on to his word. Now let me start closing this thing. This is just introduction. We'll get into some more stuff next time. Now. Now. In Genesis 12. You know Genesis 12. The Bible says God showed up to Abraham and said to him, Abraham, get out. Get out of your country. Get out of your kindred. Get out of your father's house. Unto a land that I will show you. Now this is Genesis 1. I'm reading Genesis 12. I'm reading verses 1 through um, 4. The Bible says, God told him, And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. And indeed shall all families of the earth be blessed. The verse 4 says, so Abraham departed. Now God showed up to, now at this time it was Abraham. Abraham, not Abraham. 
but for the sake of what I'm saying, I'm using Abraham, but this time he was Abraham. So, God said, leave your father, leave your mother, leave your family, leave your town folks, and go to a land that I will show you. For I will make your name great, I will bless you, and, 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 and will bless all that bless you and curse all that curse you. So Abraham departed. Now, that was a covenant, a promise God made to him. And Abraham departed. Now, you realize that when he left, he went to Canaan. And he was in Canaan. When there was a famine. And the famine forced him to flee to Egypt. And you know in Egypt... He saw how the men were looking at his wife, Sarah. And he, 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 I, I believe he knew about the Egyptians. So he knew uh, the way they were looking at his wife, they would kill him for the, to, and take the wife. So he said to the wife, tell them, I am your brother. And so the men, the, some of the princes recommended Sarah to the Pharaoh. And the Pharaoh took Sarah into his house. And God plagued the Pharaoh. Because God had a covenant with Abraham. See, see get, get that. God had a covenant with Abraham. And the wife was, for that matter, part of the covenant. So God was going to defend, protect, secure and fight for his covenant partner. Are you hearing me? So, the Pharaoh called Abraham and said, why have you done this to me? Okay, this is your woman. Just, just leave my country alone. And Abraham got out. Everything the Pharaoh gave him because of Sarah, they allowed him to take everything away. So, in the chapter 13, verse 1 and 2, the Bible talks about Abraham being rich in cattle, silver, and gold. He had a lot. Hallelujah. He had a lot. Now, you know that because when God asked him to leave, he left with not only Sarah, his wife, but also Lot, his brother's son, his nephew. So, by association... Lot has also become very rich. So, now that they came back, they came back to Canaan out of Egypt, they had so much that the land couldn't hold them with their prosperity. So they decided that they should go their separate ways. And Abraham gave the first choice to Lot. And Lot took the plains of the Jordan where the land was very fertile. But it was towards Sodom and Gomorrah. So I believe Abraham wasn't happy. So in the night, God brought him out and God said, look to the stars. Walk the let the breath of this. See, all that you are seeing, the northeast, west, I will give all to you. So what God, because of the covenant, I'm telling you about covenant. God is a covenant keeper. Now watch this. Lord took the fertile place, but God told Abraham that even where Lord was living, he has given to him, Abraham. So what? Abraham, uh, he lived where he was, okay? Watch this. In chapter 14 of Genesis, we saw these five kings coming against Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities. And they took Lot and Lot's family. And Abraham was told, Abraham went after them with his trained servants and they defeated them and brought back Lot. Uh, uh, no, no. Covenant, covenant. God keeps covenant. 
He has said to Abraham, go to the land I will show you. I will make your name great. I, I will bless you. Indeed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And God wasn't going to let anybody kill him. Abraham went after five strong kings and he defeated them. In chapter 15, the verse 1, I believe after Abraham had brought back Lot, and he didn't take, you remember the, the, the king of Sodom said, take everything and give me back my people. And uh, Abraham says, look, I have raised my hands to heaven that I'm not going to take even a shoelace from you because I'm not going to let any man say, I am the reason Abraham is blessed. Hallelujah. And you know he had this encounter with Melchizedek and stuff like that. So in the chapter 15 verse 1, God showed up to Abraham and said, Abraham, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. And Abraham started talking about, look, I have no child. You are saying you, I will inherit this. I will do this. I will do this. But wh where is the child? What, my seed shall be uh, 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 more than the stars. Nothing is happening. And this servant of mine, Eliezer is going to inherit my. And God said, no, 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 no. Don't talk like that. Eliezer is not going to be your, your heir. Your heir is to, going to be somebody of your own flesh and blood. Now, watch this. So they entered into another covenant. If you read, you know Abraham, God asked Abraham to bring, uh, last Thursday I talked about that, bring this sacrifice and then a slip fell upon and, 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 and God said, your, 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 as your, your descendants will go into slavery 400 years and I'll bring them out and all those, those good stuff. Now, watch this. In the next chapter, chapter 16, we saw Abraham. I mean, God has just entered, renewed the covenant of uh, 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 this blood sacrifice and everything. And Abraham colluded with his wife, Sarah. And Sarah gave him Hagar. And he impregnated Hagar. And Hagar now despised Sarah. No. No. Think about all these things. These are all messages in themselves. But I, 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 that's not what I'm about this morning. So what is this? Abraham tried to help God. He colluded with his wife. Got Hagar pregnant. They gave birth to Ishmael. Now, uh, Sarah had become a, a laughing stock. In chapter 17, see, the covenant-keeping God showed up again to Abraham, Abraham and said to him, My covenant is with you. Walk, walk before me and be thou perfect. Don't be foolish. Hallelujah. Walk before me and be perfect. Be perfect. Be mature. Don't try to help me. Just walk. Just obey me and walk with me. So God this time said, Your name is no longer Abraham, but Abraham. Father of many nations. And he changed the name of Sarah, Sarai also to Sarah. You see how he's keeping his covenant. Working through situations and circumstances to bring to pass that which he has promised. Because if he promises, he will honor his word, my brother. He will honor his word. Hallelujah. You know in chapter 21, that was when uh, Isaac was born. Amen. I want you to understand something that this God we save is a covenant keeper. And the Bible talks about you and I. Look at, look at. Galatians 4.28. Look at Galatians 4.28. Galatians 4.28. It says, Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are, chil are the children of promise. We, as Isaac was, are children of promise. We are children of covenant. We'll continue from there next Thursday. It is important for you and I to know God keeps covenant. In Psalm 74 verse 20, the psalmist said, Have respect of the covenant, O God. 
For the whole earth is full of the habitation of cruelty. Have respect. Have regard for the covenant. If you read that whole chapter of uh, that Psalm 74, he was talking about God ha, 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 had left them and God is, is allowing their enemies and all these things. to. And then he, he came and said, have, have respect of the covenant. For the whole earth is full of the habitation of cruelty. When the covenant is disregarded, problem comes. I want to let you go. I want us to pray. You know this is communion Sunday. So get your communion table set. And we are going to pray. This is also a prayer for healing. It's very important that as we go through this pandemic, as pandemic, as covenant sons and daughters, we continue to raise the firewall of protection and defense over our life. It is very important. Don't take anything for granted. And don't be afraid of the doom and gloom in the news. Those who know their God shall be strong in the face of anything. And they will prevail. They will do exploits. Hallelujah. Now I want you, I want, I want you to get your communion table set. And I'll read this, this particular this um, I will read this Ephesians chapter 5. And I'll read the verse 29. And 30. It, this, this, this is important. Every time I read this, um, it really strengthens me in my inner man. It says, For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, even as the Lord, the church. And then the verse 30 says, For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Think about that. Think. We, we always, normally we preach this message on marriage when we are uh, uh, officiating weddings. But I want you to look at it differently today. He says, no man hates his own flesh. But he rather nourishes and cherishes it. And he says, we are members of Christ's body. Of his bones and of his flesh. We are members of his bones and of his flesh. If no man hates his body. But nourishes and cherishes it. Do you think Christ will hate his body to the extent of putting diseases and sicknesses on us? Talk to me. Talk to me. Think with me, my brother. Do you think he will put sickness on his body? Do you think he really hates his body? That he will let cancer destroy us? Do you think he will do that? No. No. Like I said, we live in a falling world. That's why we are attacked by all these diseases. But we have to remember we have a covenant keeping God. So we are going to pray. But before we take the communion, I, I, want, I, want, I want to give somebody an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Because you, if, if I let you partake of the communion without making Jesus the Lord of your life, you are just taking a snack. And I'm not here to uh, uh, moderate snacking. Amen. So, we want to pray. If you haven't made Jesus the Lord of your life, you are standing on, a, on sinking sand. If you will confess him with your mouth 
as your Lord and Savior and believe that he died for you on your behalf and was raised from the dead by the Father God, you will be saved. So I want to pray and I want you to say this with me. It's just a minute prayer. Father in heaven, I thank you this morning. I've heard your word that I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I recognize that you sent Jesus to the cross and he died in my place. He shed his blood for the forgiveness of my sin. This morning, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge you. I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. Come into my heart. Fill me with your spirit. And let me live the rest of my life for you. Thank you. That today, I am born again. I am a member of the household of faith. God bless you. If you pray this prayer, I say congratulations and welcome to the family of God. Go on and live the victorious Christian life. Amen. Now, get this communion thing set. It says, No man hates his flesh. Lord, you don't hate me. You nourish me by your spirit. This communion, your body, your blood, will nourish my health, will nourish my body, will fill my body with divine immunity and inoculation. Your body and your blood will vaccinate me against any virus in the name of Jesus. You don't hate me, Lord. You don't put sickness and disease on me. I want you to pray that prayer. I want you to pray that prayer. Agree with him that he is not your problem. He doesn't put sicknesses on you. He will not put sickness on you. He took your sickness away. By his stripes you are healed. He was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. By the, ch the chastisement of your peace was placed upon him. He bore your sicknesses and took your infirmities. I want you to agree with me. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we've come into your presence for another round of royal healing meal. Father, we have read your word. No man hates his flesh. You don't hate your flesh. We are flesh of your flesh and bones of your bones. We are members of your body. So we are asking in the name of Jesus that divine nourishing fill our cells, fill our tissues, fill every organ. The Lord by your body, every broken body will be restored. Every sickness will be healed. In the name of Jesus now, now, as we partake of the communion, Lord, by faith, we receive abundant life, abundant health, abundant divine energy, abundant divine strength in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let everyone who believes in the mystery of the communion say a believing amen and partake of it. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, my brother and my sister. God bless you. I really appreciate you for staying with me this, this hour. And uh, I want you to know 
God, the God who has brought you this far will never leave you, he will never forsake you, he will never abandon you. Um, next, as they will continue with this covenant thing. As you go through life, the rest of your life, I want you and I to believe and always have it at the back of our minds that we are covenant sons and daughters and we serve a covenant keeping God. Amen. Um, it's sowing time. Hallelujah. And I want to pray over your offering. Uh, just, I just heard in my spirit that I should pray over the offerings uh, and the tithes. So I want to pray with you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by the power of the Holy Spirit and the authority on the authority of scriptures, According to Malachi 3.10, Father, I pray that the windows of heaven be opened over your people. Pour down blessings till they have no room enough to receive. Rebuke the devourer for their sakes. Go ahead, O Lord, make them a delight to their world. Whatever their hands find doing, bless. Because you are the Lord that blesses us. I also thank you for the good measure pressed down, shaking together, running over. Lord, bring men into their lives. Men with the necessary resources and power to be a blessing to them. And I break open every prison, everything holding anybody connected to their blessing. And I release them into their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Our cash app account is up there on your screen. So please sow and expect goodness or good measure from the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we share the grace together? May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the living God forever and ever. Amen. As for us and the children the Lord has given us, we are for signs and for wonders in this land of the living. Amen. Stay healthy, stay strong, and stay blessed. See you on Thursday. Bye-bye.